In this course, we'll be developing apps in the .NET environment using the programming language C Sharp. Now, .NET can use other languages, so you can use Visual Basic or C++ or other languages like F Sharp or J Sharp, but the most popular language to use is C Sharp, and C Sharp is just one of the most popular languages out there. But many of you may not be familiar with C Sharp, and so the purpose of this first series of videos is to just give a crash course on C Sharp. Um, now, I'm going to assume you have some basic programming knowledge. You know if statements and for loops and arrays and classes and methods and object-oriented programming generally. Now, I will reiterate some of these concepts as, as uh, we go through the, the different aspects, but this is not a basic beginner course. We're, we're picking up, assuming you have some base programming knowledge and applying it to C Sharp specifically. And a lot of what you'll be doing is learning on the job um, throughout the, the course, where I kind of refer to it like my kids were in Spanish immersion. And if you're familiar with that concept, they just put them in class and they teach half the class is English. Part of the day is English and part of the day is Spanish. And they don't do explanations like, here's what I'm saying in Spanish. They just talk in Spanish. And it's amazing to watch the kids, how they pick it up and, and learn really quickly just by doing. And so we'll learn a lot by doing. So let's uh, just talk a little bit about C Sharp. Uh, it was a language developed in, by Microsoft in about the year 2000. Now, way back in the 70s, they developed a language C. And then uh, just about 1980, they developed a language called C++. Now, if you know anything about incrementers, it's kind of funny because they've taken the language. So the plus plus takes whatever's in that variable and adds one onto it. And so they've taken C and then they built C++. And then um, a bunch of years later, Microsoft developed C Sharp. Now, if the, the Sharp, if you take two plus pluses and stack them on each other, then you can see where, where they got the C Sharp, incrementing it one more time. Um, and this is a very uh, popular language, like I said. C, <coughs> excuse me, C Sharp is also uh, strongly typed language. And this is important because as I talk to different employers over the years and I say, you know, what language would you like us to teach our students? Um, first of all, they say the, the most important thing is that the, the potential employees are problem solvers. They want people who can just get in and figure stuff out and be patient and stay after errors and solve problems on their own. But then in terms of languages, we say, well, what language should we use? And it's always the same answer. They say, I don't know, because languages change all the time. And the chances of the students lining up exactly with the skills they have, with what we're looking for in a, in a job is not <laughs> really likely. And so what we want you to do is teach them one language really well and then give them exposure to diff different languages with at least one of those languages being a strongly typed language where we're working with data types and converting between data types. Uh, that is something that's important. And so C Sharp is a strongly typed language. And what I mean by that is in, in JavaScript, when you want to declare a variable, what do you do? You say var and the name of the variable and it figures out how to handle. It's like a one size fits all approach. Uh, Python similar, although it's technically a strongly typed language, um, where we don't even say what type of information we're declaring. We just say, here's the name of the variable and it puts the information in there. And so we are gonna be in charge of our own data types and working between the data types. And so let's take a look at that, what that looks like. So if we look at different data types in C Sharp, there's all these different uh, types of data. And which one we use is determined by how we want to uh, store that data, how much data there is to store. And so if you think about the computer, you can go out and buy a stick of memory that looks something like that. And it's full of little memory cells that store information when the computer's running. And so it's got a bunch of cells. Now, if you go and buy a four gig stick of memory, that's four gigabytes. There's eight bits in a byte, so that's 32. And then a giga is a billion. So there's 32 billion 
bits on a on a four gig stick of memory, which is just mind boggling to think about. And then if I want to store something there as a variable, the variable sits out in memory. And so if I get something like a byte, let's click on a byte here, and it says it's going to go out and use eight bits of memory. So out in memory, it goes out and reserves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that right? Eight bits of memory and say that's reserved for this variable that I'm declaring. Whereas if I store something like an integer, uh, we have a 32-bit uh, storage need, then it's going to go out and reserve a much bigger space for that 32-bit information. And if you picture that there are a finite number of bits in this memory, then it's important for us to allocate memory um, according to the size. So if I'm declaring something like an age, I could use a byte because I'm probably not going to get over 255 in terms of age, right? Whereas if I'm storing something that is going to require more, that you know we're going to have 300,000 as a number, then I need to use an integer because a short or a byte would be too small. And so we want to allocate the amount of memory based on, again, needs. If an integer, so integer stores uh, 2 billion positive down to 2 billion negative. But if I need a number that's bigger than 2 billion, then I could either go to an unsigned integer, and that will go 0 to 4 billion because I don't have to worry about storing on the negative side, or I can move to a long. Now, a long uses 64 bits of memory, and so it can store really, 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 really big numbers and really, 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 really uh, big negative numbers. But all of these are integer, vari integer type variables. So meaning whole numbers. And so these can't store things like decimal numbers or letters or anything like that. It's only reserved for numbers. If we want to store decimal numbers, then we need to use something like a float. Now a float is a um, floating point number. So that it's a decimal number. It can be a really big decimal number or a really, really small decimal number, depending on where the, the floating point moves. And so there's a float that uses four bytes. There's a double that uses eight bytes, and there's a decimal that uses 16 bytes. Now, as it turns out with all of this, we used to be so much more careful about this, and we might need to still be, you know, if we're, if we're de developing an app that's gonna be using a ton of uh, different uh, variables in storage. But a lot of times we just use, it's common to just use a double, even though the number is gonna not be that big because we have so much storage these days, we have so much memory these days that we're not as careful as we probably should be. Um, so a float is a floating point number, a double is double the size of a float, so that's when, when they needed a number that was bigger then they just called it a double because it's double the size of a float and then a decimal is twice the size of a double. There's also data types like Boolean that store a true and a false and then there's uh, one of the ones we use pretty frequently is one called a char. This stores one uh, Unicode character. So it's just one character, one letter, a capital or a lowercase, uh, uh, special character, a number, but a number as a uh, character, not as an actual number. And then if we, so that's to store one character. If we need to store many characters or a string of characters, then we have a string type object. And this is what we use to store words or sentences or if we're combining uh, numbers and letters and so special characters or whatever. If, if we're doing a combination of things, then we can use a string and a string can hold a whole bunch of data. Um, and so our most common types that we use are uh, Booleans, we use those all the time. Chars, we use those all the time. Typically, if we're doing a whole number, then ints is our go-to, even though a lot of times it's overkill because we can store so much more in there than what we need. And then uh, doubles for, for decimal numbers, and then strings for words. And so there's a lot of different data types, and part of our challenge is to convert back and forth between the data types as needed as we're programming. So we'll pick up with this in the next video. Spencer out.